Welcome to World War Three, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, the Ukrainian war is here, and tonight on the report from Tiger Mountain, we are going to discuss it in all its glorious and devious detail. Stick around and listen. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the report from Tiger Mountain. We're going to talk about the war in the Ukraine. Yes, some say it's the beginning of World War Three. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. We're going to have to wait and see. Personally, I believe it's only going to be a regional skirmish between um, uh, Russia and uh, the Western powers and obviously Ukraine. Um, you know, I believe it's uh, the beginning of a proxy war. Obviously, the West uh, doesn't want to go into a, uh, you know, a shooting war with Russia. So they have to start proxy wars. This is the kind of thing that they're doing with Russia right now in Ukraine. Obviously, they probably want to do it uh, with China as well, in a, in a place probably probably like Taiwan, that'll probably be a proxy war there. So uh, it's going to be very interesting uh, what happens. But I thought you know I'd give you my um, you know deep uh, deep dive into the uh, situation in Ukraine. Okay, uh, first of all, um, you need to know a little bit about the history of, of uh, what's going on in Ukraine. And let's go right back um, to uh, pre World War Two. Um, the Ukrainians have actually quite a bit of hostility towards um, Russia because of Stalin and the Bolsheviks. Um, obviously, uh, the Bolsheviks took over uh, Russia and sent Russia into a 70-year nightmare from, um, you know, the Russian Revolution in the, uh, you know, in the teens uh, in the 20th century, right up to uh, when the Berlin Wall fall in the 1990s. So, um, you know, there was a, whole, a gigantic nightmare period where millions upon millions of people died, uh, millions upon millions of people were oppressed and uh, sent to gulags, and it was a complete nightmare for the Russian people. Um, during one of the great crimes of the uh, communist regime was the Homolodor, which uh, happened in Ukraine. Uh, it was where basically Stalin, um, for whatever reason, decided to uh, starve the Ukrainian people. Um, the estimates for the people who died in the Homolodor are somewhere between 10 and 12 million people. So it's twice the size of the Holocaust. Um, you know, you've never seen a movie on it. There's only been one or two made. There's been one made by U Ukraine that I know of, and there's been one made, I think, by Russia, both of which condemn the incident. Um, but, you know, there hasn't been a thousand movies on it like there has been the Holocaust, surprise, surprise. And, um, you know, it was a terrible event. So there is a great animosity within the Ukrainian people towards Russians. Uh, and I believe the globalists are now using this um, to foment the tensions that's been going on uh, between Ukraine and Russia. So if we go back to 2014, when the color revolution in the Ukraine um, installed a globalist um, friendly or a globalist puppet into uh, um, into Ukraine to provoke Putin. Um, so how they did it was they did one of their color revolutions. They installed a couple of uh, Jewish puppets there who was the, both the president and the um, the and the and the prime minister. I think were both Jewish back then. And then um, uh, then they started to eth attack ethnic. Um, uh, ethnic Russians in the east of Ukraine, in places like the Donbass. And they used, this is very interesting, it should be very interesting for people on the right and the far right to listen to this, they used neo-Nazis to do this, right? Because obviously, as I said before, there was this animosity between uh, Russia and the Ukraine, and uh, some of that uh, Ukrainian resistance had become completely regular, uh, sorry, ra radicalized. It had become, um, you know, Ukrainian neo-Nazis, uh, extreme right paramilitaries, uh, Avos and Red Sector are their names, and. Uh, uh, so they basically use these groups to ethnically attack uh, Russians. So this created a kind of civil war kind of situation in, um, you know, in uh, eastern Ukraine, right, right next to Russia, in Donbass and other territories that are uh, bordered with Russia. So, you know, this is, you can see, uh, it's interesting because you can see how they have used these um, Ukrainian neo-Nazis and far-right groups is a very similar way that the globalists use groups like ISIS and um, other kind of radical Muslim uh, terrorist groups who are really, if you look at, if you think about those groups along the political spectrum, most of them are actually far right. I mean, you know, even though they, I guess sometimes like a Palestinian group might say it's um, far left or something. So, you know, maybe it kind of fluctuates. But, um, you know, it's a very interesting situation. So, and, and people on the right, people who might watch the show on the Unsackled, on the Unshackled here, should think about that. Like, should think about how the globalists are quite prepared to use any group, including, um, you know, neo-Nazi groups. Uh, uh, and I believe, you know, probably even in Australia, they're using neo-Nazi groups. Like that one that was recently on, um, you know, uh, Current Affair and, and stuff. Uh, I can't remember its name. Um, you know, it was like National Socialist, something or other. But anyway, w uh, groups on the far right and extreme right should be very careful of infiltration by the globalists. But let's get back to the situation in Ukraine. So what happened is, 
is they are using these kind of uh, groups to kind of provoke Russia and this has been going on for eight years and obviously during the COVID crisis you know it was certainly on the back boiler um, but as the COVID crisis faded uh, at the beginning of 2022 um, they turned up the heat uh, uh, on the situation obviously because obviously people are going to have a lot of questions after COVID and they really essentially um, wanted to start World War 3 or start you know or hopefully start the beginnings of World War 3 the cabal obviously at the moment they had uh, the leadership had changed in the Ukraine it had gone from the previous two leaders I mentioned before to another uh, Jewish guy uh, Zelensky who was a former actor he's a fascinating figure I mean people always talk about crisis actors um, with Zelensky I mean this guy literally was an actor um, he actually was on a show I can't remember its name but it was a Ukrainian show where he played the president the guy does seem to have some charisma and uh, some you know he's reasonably good looking uh, even though he's like he's about as tall as a, as, as a tall dwarf um, <laughs> So, uh, but for whatever reason, um, you know, he, he became popular and they, the Ukrainian people, I think, had seen this show and obviously they were probably disillusioned with the other leaders. So for whatever reason, he was elected. And then he also, um, you know, was very much uh, Western friendly. He, he's most likely a Western puppet. And so he put out the hands to uh, NATO and groups like this. And this is, and th there was talk that they wanted to install nuclear weapons along the border with Russia, get NATO into the Ukraine. And that was one of the things that the Putin had said he would not tolerate. So, you know, Western powers, in my view, are completely responsible for the nightmare situation that has developed in the Ukraine. Now, I don't know if you've seen any footage that's come out of the Ukraine. It's absolutely horrible what's going on there. It's it's a brother's war. Um, you know, I mean, even though there is a lot of animosity that's historical between Ukrainians and Russians, they really are brothers. Uh, they're very similar people, not that different. Um, possibly the Ukrainians are a little bit more European and a bit more what you call Aryan. Uh, and uh, the Russians are a bit more Asiatic, you know, but that's the only difference between the two peoples. And uh, really they should be brothers i know that uh, and it should be remembered that the um you know the atrocity of the homolodor was committed by the bolsheviks and stalin which uh, are a foreign power as i said uh they were a foreign group of people who took over russia they weren't russian most of the bolsheviks uh even stalin was not from russia he was from georgia and he was obviously a monster um so it's a very interesting situation and ukraine has been um, uh, sunk into this awful brothers war uh, and the Western powers are, are really um, egging the situation on because they want this disaster and they want Ukraine to become as big a nightmare and as big a quagmire as possible so they can all blame it on on Putin Putin obviously originally went into uh, this invasion hoping to secure uh, territories like the Donbass that are mainly ethnically Russian and other territories along those lines. But um, I imagine he has the, um, the ambition to take Kiev uh, and, um, you know, install a, a Russian friendly uh, leader there. And I mean, you know, if, if you really cared about the Ukrainian people, like supposedly people in the West do, you would say to surrender as soon as possible. because There's no way the Ukrainians can win this war against the Russian military. It's ridiculous. They're right next door to Russia. They have the might of the whole Russian army, which only a small percentage has been sent into the Ukraine at the moment. And if Putin sends in more, it's a fait accompli what will happen. So anybody who, who is, who is um, cheerleading the war, they are basically interested in, in sacrificing and sending as many people in the Ukraine who are Ukrainians and good Europeans into the um, you know meat grinder. Uh, and we've seen this before, haven't we, ladies and gentlemen? We saw it with the First World War, with how many people died in the First World War, how many French, Germans, you know, all fighting each other, all brothers, all good Europeans. Again, this was another war started by the globalists. And then, of course, World War II, which is an even bigger disaster, um, you know, where the globalists were actually directly taken on by the Axis powers. And, um, but, you know, obviously, in the end, they lost. So uh, it's, um, you know, a very disturbing situation, what's happening. And uh, I'm not pro-war. Uh, I am sympathetic to uh, Putin's side because I believe he's been completely provoked. And I do believe that Putin is fighting the new world order for whatever reason, even though he might go along with some of the globalist agenda at times, if it suits Russia or his own agenda, I do think he is essentially anti-globalist. And uh, so what we're seeing now is almost the first anti-globalist war that's happening in, in the Ukraine. So um, it's fascinating what's going on. It's probably worth uh, a second report here at the report from Tiger Mountain. But I think um, that's my first thoughts on the terrible disaster in the Ukraine. And uh, let's hope that a peace is worked out as soon as possible between Ukraine, the Ukrainian people, and not the globalist leader Zelensky and um, Putin. Because obviously peace, uh, the sooner peace comes to Ukraine, the better it is for everybody. Thank you for listening today. Cheers.